This young woman moved to Sweden from Iran a decade ago. The new life meant a new school and new friends. But her family, steeped in tradition, did not agree with her new lifestyle. When my father learned that I had Swedish friends, he told me not to spend time with them. I refused. Then he and my brothers started beating me severely, me, my sister and my mother, who defended me. After her father threatened to kill her, the young woman ran away to a different city. Now Fatima, as she has decided to call herself, has been in hiding for several years. Fatima's story is an example of a so-called honor crime, when parents, mostly from traditional Muslim families, used violence against women to force them into arranged marriages or prohibit them from integrating into society. It was their parents that came to Sweden for a better life, and uh, the girls grow up and want more freedom than the parents can give. When girls see what opportunities other girls in Sweden have, there comes to family conflicts. I know about two, three murder cases in Sweden, and we have also had some girls jumping from balconies. One such story rocked Sweden seven years ago. The 26-year-old Turkish immigrant Fadime was intimidated by her family for dating a Swedish boyfriend. She ran away, but was found and shot by her father. Her funeral was televised live and attended by members of the royal family. Fadima's death sparked massive debate in the moderate Swedish society and led to the creation of several civil organizations helping honor crimes victims. Marianne Forslund heads one of these and says unfortunately they are still swamped with work. We started with 10 girls five years ago and last year we had 160. We helped them to change their surnames and we provide them with housings, housings in other, other cities where you can't find them. Secrecy, that's what these organizations pay special attention to, as the reason for the 2002 killing was that the woman's enraged family had managed to find her. During our interview with her, Fatima was very nervous and insisted that we do not show specific traits of her appearance. She has found a job she likes and says she is getting on well, but she is still very scared. I would rather live in loneliness and struggle to survive, rather than going back to what was my home. Sweden's Muslim community is estimated at 300,000 people. Social workers stress that the problem does not apply to all Muslim families. Three to four hundred girls a year run away from their homes to escape abuse. But this, they say, does not make honor crimes less of a threat. They have come here to seek a better living, but it seems not all of them are ready to live a new life and to leave traditions behind. And while the Swedish government is investing into prevention of honor-related crimes, the number of women applying for help every year is not diminishing. Alexey Roshevsky, RT, Gothenburg and Stockholm, Sweden.